Hi Switch Up family and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a review of Aragami 2 from Mike Foster, our latest reviewer, and this is his second ever review. Aragami 2 is the second entry in the Aragami franchise from Lintworks. It's a third person stealth action adventure where the player takes on the role of a soulless ninja warrior who must complete missions in the hopes of saving other Aragamis inflicted with a weird illness, all whilst taking down evil forces who are trying to destroy the land. So does this ninja game strike true or do the shuriken not quite hit Hit their target. Well, let's find out. You are an Aragami or Shinobi spirit who ends up in a village run by the Kiritsuba clan. Originally summoned to this plane of existence, each member of the clan have awoken from their state of summoning and made their way of their own accord to the Kakarega village. It's here that you learn about your need to find a cure for the disease causing them to slowly fade away into madness. But the more pressing matter is the plot to take down the invading Akatsushi clan who seem hell bent on destroying the land. These are the adversaries that stand between you and your objective on each and every mission. From that perspective, the story is relatively straightforward. Complete a mission and it unravels more. Do this enough times and you'll presumably save all the Aragami and the land. Gameplay wise then, it continues some of the stealth trends from the first while changing others. The village serves as a player hub. This is where you accept missions, customize your character and perform upgrades. It's also dotted with NPCs who unravel the story for you after each one and throughout the stages you visit as well as in this zone, there are hidden items to be found to help with the aforementioned upgrades and customization. Now the quests themselves swap between assassination spying or theft with stealth being the order of the day. Sneak in, do what has to be done and escape, rinse and repeat. There are a lot of missions here but sadly there are only 10 different locations not including the village or player hub so repetition of zones is to be expected. New areas within one can open up and the placement of enemies does change each mission but this is both a blessing and a curse where you will find yourself heading to those same spots. Due to the subtle changes with level parameters and objectives you don't exactly get bored with this method, but I can see how some people will find this repetitive. I felt that the familiarity and the way it teaches you to use your surroundings to better achieve the task was actually quite clever while still keeping you on your toes. This time around, areas take on more verticality, giving you more overall options whilst not being too large so as to make the whole thing feel like a stealth walking simulator. It's always nice to see various difficulty options and settings and in this regard you can set the game to be as easy or hard as you like, with hard mode providing more realism and certainly more of a challenge if you're a veteran of this genre. However, even on hard mode it's not so unforgiving as to have one single discovery of your stealth-like skills alert the entire camp. Instead, it will affect your overall score as well as grade you're afforded. And this also is where the leveling comes in. Experience and money are earned based on the score you get at the end of each one. And even at a relatively casual pace, I found that the skill points were enough that I didn't feel I had to go back to grind out higher scores. Of the three different difficulty modes, each will afford certain nuances to the gameplay, like enemies waking up once being knocked out or how alert the guards are. But you won't feel overly punished if you decide to switch to another one to make the experience a little more palatable. While the control scheme is relatively straightforward, it did take a little getting used to. The important point though is that they're responsive and very snappy. You've got your standard attack, as well as a defense, a double jump, a dash grab, and what's become affectionately referred to as sneaky mode, a sort of ninja sonar, which I probably relied on far too heavily. What's changed here then is that you no longer only dash from shadow to shadow. You also get to unlock skills, which really makes all the difference here. Over time the more abilities you unlock gives you access to switching between styles which can be done on the fly during missions and that's where it really shines as you soon feel you're more like the vengeful spirit creating distractions and darting about the map best avoided attacking and defense feels a little like a last resort it's all about breaking down the enemy's stamina you watch out for the sign of an attack and then do your best to defend or parry this then gives you a window of opportunity for me gameplay scores 15 out of 20 and the controls score 17 out of 20 Performance in both handheld and docked is fine. Jumping over rooftops or whilst performing an attack 
didn't lead to any noticeable lag or stutter, but the overall visual quality is where Aragami 2 drops the ninja scroll a bit. The developers opted for a watercolour style visual theme which works, but there are some noticeable downsides to this, one of which is blood splattering. It's almost like dabs of paint repeated upon each assassination you deal out. Also bearing in mind it's a game where the main mechanic is hiding in the shadows and then surveying the patterns and movement of your enemy, well, we have an issue. Every NPC that falls out of what is potentially a sphere of proximity, no larger than maybe 20 feet, well, their animations begin to stutter. Now, view distance is okay, but stretch this even further and this gets even worse. It's funny because in the first title, they had the problem where the shadows didn't render far enough and this time they seem to have swapped that for the next most important thing, which is the enemies you're facing. It makes plotting your routes and the overall mechanics of the game much more difficult than they would otherwise be. It really is quite unfortunate. If you're looking at this and thinking, well, that doesn't really bother me, then okay. But for me, it did affect the gameplay. I would give visuals and performance 12 out of 20. When it comes to music and audio, it all works towards setting the right tones. Everything is as you would imagine a ninja soundtrack to be. Gentle Japanese tunes of a feudal era or more upbeat battle style ones when the heat turns up. It sets the scene well, but it's nothing we haven't heard before. The sound effects are nice, if not a tad generic, with the overall audio fidelity being absolutely fine. Now the last point here is that in docked mode, it's performing the same as it is in handheld and the same gripes apply. Music and audio scores 15 out of 20. Aragami 2 comes in at an indie premium of £34.99. It does have some online functionality, but as of the time of writing, I wasn't able to test this. Perhaps in co-op, it would be more enjoyable. It clocks in at just 6 gigabytes, and it'll take you around about 15 hours to complete. If the experience clicks with you, then the value's there. For me, it didn't do quite enough, especially for what I would class as quite a premium indie game price. I'd give the value 14 out of 20. As a fan of the old Tenchu Stealth Assassin games, I came into this one quite excited. I think where it manages to set itself apart and put its own stamp on the genre is with the skills you unlock. They gave you a new way to approach the tried and tested sneak up and dispatch style of the previous games. Although not mentioned much, that online co-op could certainly add a lot for certain players. The whole thing felt a little bit safe as a sequel and I would have liked to see them push a little more into some new areas. Overall, it gets a switch up score of 73%. Having personally tried the online co-op myself, I can vouch that it does increase the overall experience. So if that's the area you're most interested in, it's been running well and you're likely to enjoy the experience all the more for it. Well, a thanks to Mike. I think he once again did another good job. And having finished this one myself, I couldn't agree more. I really feel like a remake of Tenchu Stealth Assassin would just be amazing. I want the full blood and gore. I want those ridiculous animations in there. And there's something about Aragami which is just a bit too safe for me. As always, if you want to save 10% on any of your games, use code SWITCHUP over at switchup.gg to buy your eShop vouchers. All that's left to say is thanks to our Patreons and our members, and for all things Switch, all the time, keep it SWITCH UP. Cheers guys! See ya!